I hope you're all well. Today we are starting a new reading vlog. I don't know how this week's gonna go. I'm a little bit anxious. It's a little bit of a mess of a week. Andy's got his theory test tomorrow and I will be at work Wednesday and Thursday and then I need to come home Thursday evening and have Friday at home and then he's off Saturday, Sunday. So it's a little bit of a, it's thrown me off a little bit having this theory test tomorrow. It's like 11 o'clock in the morning as well, so it's quite early. So I don't know if I need to go to his tonight or I can get away with going tomorrow morning. We'll have to see. But this week is a themed weekly reading vlog and I'm very excited, I'm not going to lie. Um, basically, my patrons, uh, my, t my team principal patrons get to put some prompts into a pot and I pick one every month or every other month depending on how long it takes me to, depending on how long it takes me to do the vlog. Um, and they have very simple prompts in them and for this weeks well for march's prompt it was newest so i took that as uh newest books that have made it to my shelves recently so i had a quick look back at some of the books that have come through to my shelves over the last couple of months and i basically put a poll on patreon they have pretty much chosen my tbr for this week <laughs> Uh, because I couldn't make the decision myself. So I have three books I'm going to read with you guys and in the background I'm also going to be doing a vlog for them. So they will see everything that's in this vlog plus more and I have an extra book for them as well. So for you guys, the books that I'm going to be reading, I have Shadow Hall Academy, The Whispering Walls by Phil Hicks. These, the books that I've picked for you, like in this vlog, for you guys, public video at 2024 releases so this one has come out this year and it is a middle grade and i'm really looking forward to it i think it's going to be like a paranormal middle grade maybe slightly dark academia book and i am very much so looking forward to that boarding school and spookiness and mallory towers gone rogue sign me up it's not too long and i'm really looking forward to it there is no audiobook for it though but i'm hyped for this one i've really enjoyed phil hicks's Adeline, what is the series? Avalyn Jones series. I loved that series. So very excited to get a new series from him. Then we also have Bride by Ali Hazelwood. This is the Afterlight edition. Again, it's come out very recently and I have not read this one yet. I've only read one book from Ali Hazelwood and it was The Love Hypothesis. I have all of her others. I don't know if you'll be able to spot them. They're up here. I have them all, but I just haven't read them yet. So this is this is her first dive into fantasy romance, I believe. Uh, and I think it's a vampire and a werewolf. And other than that, I don't know much more about it. So I'm looking forward to it. Have heard mixed things. But I think because I have only read one book from her previously, for me, this will just be a dip from just romance into fantasy romance. And I think I maybe I won't have as... Uh, strong opinions about this one way or the other if that makes any sense you know I haven't read all of her backlist and therefore I'm not fully invested in like the whole contemporary side of her writing style so maybe it won't affect me as much with the fantasy romance going into it some people have like really disliked it and said it's just not worked some people have really enjoyed it so maybe it won't affect me one way or the other too heavy but we will see so I'm excited about reading this one and then the last one that was picked for me is To Cage a God by Elizabeth May this one is the Illumicrate edition, if I remember correctly, I'm fairly certain. Yeah, Illumicrate edition. This is absolutely stunning and I am obsessed with it. Um, I, I don't know too much about it, I'm not going to lie. Uh, to cage a god is divine, to be divine is to rule, to rule is to destroy. And I don't know the full ins and outs. I will read the synopsis and stuff and let you know more about these books when I'm going into them. But I am looking forward to this one. It is a chonker of a book. So we'll have to see how I actually get on with this one. Um, 450 odd pages. But it's so beautiful and I'm very excited to get to this one. I've had my eye on it for a while. So those are the three books that I'm aiming to read for you this week. Fingers crossed I managed to get to them all. Like I say, it's going to be a busy, busy week and we will have to see how I get on with that. But yeah, I just wanted to come on and do a quick introduction for this video and I will let you know as soon as I start one of these what exactly I'm starting and what it is about. All right, howdy. It's much later in the day. I've spent the day today working, trying to get as much of my work done as I possibly can. Um, it's currently half past nine and I have just... For 
just finished the final book that I needed to read for the big long project I've been reading. That video is finally done and I'm so freaking proud of myself. So just finished reading that. I've done like a whole bunch of work today. I've read that entire book today and I am going to start a book for this vlog um, just to get started on something. I don't know how much how far I'm going to get into it to be honest. We'll see. I am in the mood to watch some TV but I just want to at least start something. So the book that I am going to start on is Bride by Ali Hazelwood. I'm really looking forward to this one. I am hyped in Indeed. So let's read the synopsis together because I haven't read this synopsis at all. Misery Lark, the only daughter of the most powerful vampire councilman of the Southwest, is an outcast again. Her days of living in anon anonymity. Anonymity? Anonymity? Anon anonymity? Is that a word? Among the humans are over. She has been called upon to uphold a historic peacekeeping alliance between the vampires and their mortal enemies, the Wares, and sees little choice but to surrender herself in the exchange again. Wares are ruthless and unpredictable and their alpha, Low Morland, is no exception. He rules his pack with absolute authority but not within the justice and unlike the vampire council, not without feelings. It's clear from the way he tracks Misery's every move that he doesn't trust her, if only he knew how right he was. Because Misery has her own reasons to agree to this marriage of convenience, reasons that have nothing to do with politics or alliances and everything to do with the only thing she ever cared about. And she's willing to do whatever it takes to get back what's hers, even if it means a life alone in wear territory, alone with the wolf interesting fascinated by this indeed so yeah i'm intrigued about picking this one up very excited so let's get to it afternoon it is wednesday and it's currently 4 45 in the afternoon i've finished work and i'm now back at andy's he's at work till seven unless he does come home earlier he's really unwell today he slept terribly last night he was up every hour um so we'll see whether or not he does come home early but in the meantime i'm gonna get some reading done so it is wednesday been a couple days since I last told you what I was reading and I did in fact pick up Bride and I am making my way through it. On Monday night I ended up getting to page 153 and I'm actually really really enjoying this. I'm having a very good time. I find it really funny that our main character is called Misery. <laughs> it cracks me up. Um, so we've got Misery and Lo. Misery is a vampire, Lo is a werewolf and he is the alpha of their pack and in order to make a truce an alliance misery and low have ended up getting married now misery's got a reason for doing this and it is that her best friend slash sister has gone missing and she thinks that low could have something to do it or do with it or someone in his pack um low has done this for the alliance exactly spe specifically uh in order for it to be everything be okay we have just found out the reason potential reason between be, behind misery's best friend's disappearance um and there is a very cute little sister of lowe's in this called anna she's six and she's adorable um so i'm actually really enjoying this so far i'm having a very good time with it i think it's really funny i think the narrator of the audiobook is doing a fantastic job she's very emotive and she's putting a lot of emotions into 
this story. I feel like this woman has read this several times, made some notes and gone, okay, at this point, it's quite emotional or at this point, we're really angry or at this point, it's quite angsty. And she's really putting that emotion into the story. Sometimes you get some narrators and they're very bland and they say a sentence and then you go, so like they'll say a sentence that the character's saying and then they'll say, he said angrily, but they've said it very normal. And I'm like, oh, come on, just do a little bit of research, you know? <laughs> or go back and re-record it. If you haven't read this before, go back and re-record that and say it a bit more with a bit more oomph, you know? Anyway, the narrator's doing a really good job and I'm having a very good time with this one. So I'm very glad that I've gotten started with this and I am reading multiple books at the same time which I haven't done for a while unless it's been books in the background for another video and I haven't been telling you about it. So it's nice to kind of have the opportunity to be able to do that in one video. But the other book that I have picked up is Shadow Hall Academy, The Whispering Walls by Phil Hicks. Um, I ended up picking this one up yesterday because I was waiting for Andy for an hour or so while he was going doing uh, his theory test, which he did not pass, but we'll... <laughs> We'll get back to that um he'll just book it again and we'll have another try um but i did get to page 60 i'm in the middle of a, of a chapter i did get to page 62 i'm really enjoying this so far we're following lillian jones who whose mother i don't know if her mother is still alive or if her mother's left or if her mother's you know passed away or whatever i'm not sure but her mother went to like an all girls boarding school when she was younger she's always wanted the same thing for lillian so she has decided to go she's got a younger sister she's leaving her dad behind as well and she's ended up turning up at shadow hall academy she's very anxious she doesn't really want to do this but she's doing it because it's what her mum wanted so she turns up at shadow hall, shadow hall academy and the room she's bunking in with, the girls that she's bunking in with in her room, there are four other people to a room. So there are two other girls there when she gets there and they are uh, Serena, who is a little bit like the queen of the school, if you like, and also Marion, who is the initial friend that she makes. She's a little bit of a goth. She's a little bit more, you know, alternative and all that good stuff. And I really enjoy Marion's character. Serena calls her spooky. Um, and they have kind of like, Lillian's worked out that they, these two kind of have like this playful back and forth banter where it seems like they might be me being mean to each other, but they're actually not. They really get on. Um, and it's a really nice group of girls. And then at the very last minute, Angela arrives late on in the day. She arrives, she's the second new girl. Um, and from the first night, Angela's having some strange experiences in the school and she can hear some tapping next to her bed. Uh, so like the following night, well, the following day, um, I'm just trying to keep all these girls' names straight. Marion, Marion, Serena, Lillian, and I want to say Misery, that's from Bride. Lillian's our main character, Serena Marion, who is the emo, Serena being the queen of like the school or whatever, and then Angela, the new girl. So Angela has a struggle. The following day, um, Marion ends up telling Lillian a story of this uh, girl called Mary, apparently, who passed away many years ago um, in the walls. And things start going from there they start doing a little bit of investigating i think they're about to get into some trouble with the head of the school but so far i'm really enjoying it it's very atmospheric very phil hicks-esque and i'm really having a good time he does such a good job of making it creepy and giving you the chills but you being like yeah kids could read this and still enjoy that still enjoy it maybe be more creeped out than me but not to the point that they probably wouldn't sleep at night do you know what i mean so so far i'm really enjoying it and i'm having a good time with it so those are the two books that i'm currently reading at the moment i am hoping to finish uh one or both of these uh maybe maybe not i was going to say by the time i get home tomorrow that's not going to happen i'm working tomorrow <laughs> Uh, and I'm not going to finish, I could finish Shadow Hall Academy if I really put my mind to it before Andy came home, if he didn't come home till seven, but it's not likely. And I would like to get some more into Bride, I think. So I'm probably going to focus a bit more on Bride this evening. And then tomorrow I will be going home in the evening and I'll do some more reading. And then we've got all day Friday for reading as well. Um, and then over the weekend, I will be back up in West Orton for, uh, not Halloween, 
it's not fucking Halloween. It's because of the books I'm reading uh, for Easter. So yeah, this probably will bleed into Monday a bit. I would really love it if it didn't, but it probably will just a little bit. I got some other work I need to do on Monday really, but I can drag that into Tuesday. Um, so this probably will bleed into Monday a little bit just because it's Easter weekend and I will be with my family for a good chunk of the weekend. So we'll see what happens, but I'm going to try and pr make some progress on these right now. And I'll come back to you when I have another update for you. Oh, also another update. I got a new phone. Um, I did have the Oppo X3, Find X3 Pro or whatever the hell it was. And I'd had it for a couple of years, but it was really slowing down. I was having to charge it like three times in a day in order for it to get through the day. Because of my job, I'm on my phone like eight hours a day, if not more. Um, so... I, it was time for a new phone for an upgrade and I ended up going for the Samsung S24 Ultra and I'm oh hello and I'm obsessed um, hello I'm obsessed with it I'm really enjoying it so far I only picked it up yesterday we spent like three hours waiting for all of my information to transfer from one phone to the other because I've got so much shit on my phone so I need to get better at keeping it tidy really but yeah new phone day very excited I also forgot to show you my nails last week so let's do that now I got little bunnies for Easter uh, these have got like white dots on them. They're pale pink with white dots and then pale blue as well And I really love them and they're cute. I forgot to show you last week, but I will be getting oh, no It will be next week. I'm getting my nails done. So I'll do that in the holiday vlog. So That's everything that was everything I wanted to update you on. I'm gonna go and get some reading done Okay, good afternoon. It's Thursday. It's 12 30. I've come to work from home because uh, I don't feel too great I'm not gonna lie and I'm really hoping I'm not coming down with what Andy's got. I didn't end up reading anything yesterday because he came home literally as I stopped filming. So we went to bed really, really early last night and he actually managed to get some sleep, which is great news. Um, so I need to do some invoicing this afternoon for work and then I can get on with reading. But I have come home to this lot. Uh, so I thought we could open it up together. I need my so the theme for this one is swan lake this is the Feralu adult box this is the only book that i get from them currently actually because i have just got on the romanticy box as well um so oh that's pretty okay so this is a feather so black by Le lyra 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 celine this is really really pretty I don't know what this is about, but I'm going to assume it might be a retelling of Swan Lake, maybe? I don't know. Could be totally wrong with that. Uh, underneath the dust jacket, very, very beautiful. What a nice spine. And then on the reverse of the dust jacket, we have this. Oh, this is the original cover. See, this is what I love. Do the original cover on the reverse. I actually think... There's a possibility I might actually refer, prefer the reverse. I like that they've put everything on the flip as well, like even the author's um, bio is on the reverse. Just check it as well. Love that. Good job, Fairly. And then the um, end papers as well. The same on both sides. Is this signed? Yes signed as well so let's find out what this is about because i know nothing about it a feather so black is a sizzling fancy romance set in a world of perilous magic and moonlit forests spinning a seductive tale of changeling princess her cursed sister and the dangerous fey lord she must defeat to save her family interesting Surprised they've decided to put this in the fantasy one when they're doing a romanticy box, but regardless, very pretty, very nice. Um, next we have one from Blackwells. Oh, finally, I think I actually ordered this one the other day because it came in in stock in store so i didn't want to miss out on it but it is the us 
special one of the special edition copies of redeeming six by chloe walsh i haven't read this one yet this is the chunkiest out of all of them so far 760 odd pages very pretty this is going to look great on my shelves over there uh matching those so nice i just love excuse you i just love this i love how flat it lays uh so that is that one and then we have two from waterstones uh so what have we got these must be pre-orders because i haven't ordered anything from them recently okay so we've got just for the summer by abby jimenez very excited about this one i've just given another abby jimenez five stars so this will be my sixth one from her that could also be a five star so i'm very excited about that and then this one is a thriller and it is the Last Murder at the End of the World by Stuart Turton. I ended up getting the uh, Waterstones one because it's got really pretty sprayed edges. Um, so yeah, I was sold by the sprayed edges and I think it is signed. Oh yeah, it's there. Signed by the author. Right at the bottom on the end papers. Anything to those check it? Nah, just plain yellow. Very pretty indeed. So this one is a thriller solve the murder to save what's left of the world exciting and this one is a romance to find their soulmate all they need is four dates a kiss and a breakup sign me up abby jimenez knows what she's doing so that was a nice little book haul all of these i did purchase unlike last week where i got a whole bunch of books and only bought one of them <laughs> um these two were pre-orders though so this one was not but i'm just getting these as they come out because i don't want to miss out on them because they are very pretty editions of well I've, the first two are my favorite books of all time um so i want to make sure that i get them in the rest as well and i will be getting taming seven when that one comes out so yeah nice little haul there so i'm going to do some invoices for my dad and then i will get into some reading for the rest of the evening so hopefully the invoices won't take me too long um i did nip into town i went to wigan to take some stuff back to primark i've dropped a whole bunch of clothes off at the post office to go back um from sheen that i bought for holiday that either don't fit or i don't like them and i've just had a huge delivery from boohoo as well so i need to try those on and make sure that i pack up anything that might be going back and keep and wash anything that i'm keeping for holiday so we've got just over a week till i go but i will be leaving the house on either tuesday evening or wednesday morning probably tuesday evening um for the last time for two and a half weeks so i need to make sure that everything is done and dusted over this weekend in which that's really funny because i'm not going to be here unless andy's really poorly in which case i will just go to my mum and dad's on sunday and just leave him be for the weekend um if he's not recovered so he's got a pretty good bounce back if i get a cold i'm usually down and out for like two weeks um whereas he's got a pretty good bounce back he's like a child so <laughs> um so yeah i'm gonna get this work done and i'll check back in with you and have an update for you okay hello it's friday it's currently 22 2 having a very slow day today but uh, i've got some reading updates for you so i did read quite a bit yesterday after i finished pottering about with the work stuff that i needed to do and finishing off some holiday stuff i needed to sort out as well um but last night i did finish bride the dust jackets on my dining table i did finish bride last night i really enjoyed this i haven't run it through core pile yet but i reckon it's going to get four star on goodreads it could get four and a half on core pile i really really enjoyed this i liked the element of vampire and where kind of coming together i liked uh how that was done i will say there was like a scene towards the end that i thought was very cringy i'm not gonna lie it was really quin cringy it was a sex scene and i was a little bit cringe about it but um other than that i really enjoyed the overall plot of this I really like the integrated plot of Misery looking for Serena and that's why she ended up mar marrying Low because she thought that he might have something to do with Serena going missing. Uh, I really liked how that all kind of wrapped up. I loved the character of Anna as well and her, like, her, her 
my head hurts so bad i've got such a throbbing headache i i loved her character in all of this and what her character brought to the story uh i liked owen misery's brother i there was so much going on and i just really enjoyed this story i thought it was very very good um and i wouldn't be mad if ali decided to revisit this and give us a second book in the series maybe following some other characters um within the series so i would not be mad about that in the slightest i don't know if this is meant to be a standalone or if she's written it with potential intentions of giving us a sequel um but it can be left as a standalone if it doesn't do as well um so yeah i really enjoyed this one four stars for bride which is great news and i'm very proud of myself for reading that one uh shadow hall academy the Whispering Walls, I'm still making my way through. I did read some more last night. I'm up to page 120, so I've got 100 pages to go. I'm going to see if I can try and get through this um, tonight. It was freaking me out a little bit last night. Sorry, today. It was freaking me out a little bit last night. It was starting to get really, really creepy. And it was like pitch black outside. It was dead windy and it was rainy. And the vibes were there, but I was freaking out. So I stopped reading. But I'm still having a very good time with this one. The atmosphere in it clearly is very, very good because it's working. Um, so that is the update on that. And then last night when I finished Bride, because I need another audiobook, I ended up picking up To Cage a God by Elizabeth May. Now I got to page 54. I have got no idea what's going on in this fucking book. <laughs> I have got no clue. The magic system has not been explained at all. I don't know if the intention is that it's meant to be explained to us later. I don't fucking know. I have no clue what's going on. We are following Sarah and also Galena. Yeah, Galena. Who I think are sisters. Yeah, they're sisters and their mother grafted gods into their bones. So we will have them having conversations with each other and then every now and then the gods inside them will chirp into the conversation. Uh, it's all very, very weird. It's not been explained why or how or for what reason this is happening. None of that has happened. Um, the world building, I don't really know what is going on. Um, our main characters, I think, are meant to be in their 30s and it kind of reads YA. They swear a lot, like Sarah loves to swear, uh, but it kind of reads YA. And I'm not going to lie, like the writing style of this, the prose, is quite boring. I'm just bored with this book. I'm not having a good time. I'm very, very bored. I've had a quick look on the reviews and they're not great they are not great a lot of people are saying all of the things that i'm feeling about this book they're not very good and i'm really sad about it because i think there's supposed to be like maybe a dragon in here from what i'm getting off the cover the cover is beautiful absolutely stunning this is so pretty um but i'm just really 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 bored and i do not care uh so and uh, as we go through we get in more characters vasilius vasili vasilis vasilisa struggles vasilisa katya sarah galena we're getting more and more characters as we go through the book none of this has been explained to me with two characters how am i gonna fare with four uh so yeah i just i don't care enough and i think think i'm gonna dnf it whether that's a complete dnf i don't know i may come back to it some other point but right now this is not doing it for me so i am gonna dnf it whether that be soft or hard dnf i don't know but i'm putting that one down so on that basis that would in theory mean i only have 100 pages left to read of this and your vlog's done so what i've decided to do is swap to cage got out by elizabeth may for another book now last night i went upstairs to see what i was in the mood for but still a new release that i'm anticipating and i ended up taking it to a poll with my patrons because again they've picked the tbr for this video um so they are all new releases that have come out this year that i am intrigued about actually that doesn't really track because the book that i've ended up picking up didn't come out this year 
not that it matters but it's still an anticipated release for me so the books that i ended up picking it is what it is this uh, i will just be a new release uh, an anticipated releases vlog instead of 2024 releases vlog whatever it doesn't matter uh so the books that i picked were wolf gone wild by juliet cross this one did come out some time before this but it's been um traditionally published i believe uh this year so 2019 this came out cc pre-ordered this for me for my birthday and it literally came last week i think or this week i can't remember so this was one of them and then the other one was mina and the slayers by amy mccall this one did come out in 2022 um but i only recently got this one in the last couple of weeks from amy she sent it me herself which gave me the push to read mina and the undead last week and i really really enjoyed it so i've been desperate to get to this one um so this actually is on my april tbr to take on holiday with me but i'll just take the third one <laughs> because mina won <laughs> uh mina did win so i am going to be reading mina and the slayers and i am looking forward to continuing on with this series because i really loved mina and the undead so i'm currently 15 pages in i got started with this a little bit this morning it is going to be a physical read in mina and the undead we're following mina who is 17 years old and her mum disappeared a year prior than her and her sister libby who is 19 um aren't sure where her mum went but she disappeared a year ago and not long after libby decided to move to new orleans to go to school so she is left behind with her aunt now her aunt has decided that she would like to go travel in the world so mina decides to go spend the summer in new orleans with libby Libby works in like this mansion that's kind of dressed up to be a creepy in, you know, whole interactive spooky show thing in New Orleans that she works at. And she ends up getting um, Mina an introduction to the woman who runs the whole place and being like, maybe she can have a job. So she does a shift there and she ends up finding a real dead body in the mansion so things kind of go from there there's already been two other murders that week within town and things kind of go from there and it's really really good i just love the atmosphere of this book of this series set in the backdrop of new orleans in 1995 and um so it's already got the creep factor it's got loads of pop culture references it's got like movie references of all the movies that i've loved in the past like horror and stuff vampire stuff um we've got jared who is a flatmate of libby's we've got della who is libby's girlfriend and these just all of these different characters the found family side of it really really good i really really enjoyed myself with mina and the undead so in the slayers we're approaching halloween it's the week of halloween so i'm really intrigued because obviously we've just had summer with them and in the slayers we've got halloween and i think this is going to be more like on the buffy side of things this series has been compared to the likes of scream and buffy if they came together and uh this book is like buffy meets scream with a touch of i know what you did last summer and i'm here for all of it sign me the fuck up because i love all of those things <laughs> so very excited about this one very lo much looking forward to getting through it today i literally have nothing to do but read and the way that andy is still so very very unwell at the moment he's still in work because um he can't really afford to take the days off he doesn't get sick pay because he's not contracted so he's still in work um i reckon he's literally going to be in bed all day tomorrow just resting and trying to recover so that he's well enough for holiday and i don't want to catch what he's got i'm worried i might already have it so i'm going to try and dope up on nerve and cold and flu tablets and lemon water all day tea and whatnot all day uh but yeah on that basis i could have today and tomorrow free to completely read and i have these two to get through plus the extra book for patrons so I'm excited about both of these. This is a vibe and I'm really, really here for it. So yeah, very excited. Those are my plans for the day. Check in with you and I've got something to update you on.
Okay, good morning. It is 5 to 11 on Sunday. I didn't update you yesterday. I was in a really weird funky mood again where I couldn't decide what to do. I did end up doing some sprints with Jade for a good chunk of the day and I did read something but it wasn't a huge lot. <laughs> it was so, which is better than nothing. But um, I need to come and give you an update because I did finish a book on Friday. So I did finish Shadow Hall Academy, The Whispering Walls by Phil Hicks on Friday. I loved this. This was so good and I cannot wait for the next one in the series. Phil Hicks really knows how to write middle grade horror. This was so atmospheric. I'm glad I stopped on Thursday night when I did because the book just got more and more spooky and atmospheric and sinister um so i definitely would have given myself nightmares i think the way that phil hicks can write such a i keep saying the word atmospheric but i just don't know how else to explain it but atmospheric and spooky and terrifying story in such a short amount of time for children essentially i would say that this is the upper end of middle grade <laughs> maybe even the lower end of ya i would say but anybody can enjoy this like i'm a 34 year old woman i nearly said 32 then i'm a 34 year old woman and this gave me the heebie-jeebies i'm not joking um the haunting adeline series was the same the dead voices um what's it called what's the first one called is it no dead voices is the third one um, but that series by Catherine Arden, that was the same. Um, so I, this is what I love about horror is that no matter what age you're reading, under the right circumstances, it can break you out. <laughs> so this was fantastic. Again, we're following these four girls. Our main character is called Lillian Jones. We have Marion, who is like the goth in the group. We've got Serena, who's like Queen Bee of the group. And then we also have Angela as well, who is the other new girl like Lillian. So they've all gone to Shadow Hall Academy, which is a boarding school. And uh, on Lillian and Angela's first night, Serena and Marion have been there for a while. But on Lillian and Angela's first night, they hear some knocking in the walls. And Marion, not too like a few hours before had told oh no a few hours after it was the following day um ended up telling Lillian about the story of a girl called Mary who had been um left in the walls over like a break a bank holiday break or whatever um a very terrible game of hide and seek she ended up climbing into the walls to hide and then got stuck and everyone just assumed that she'd left and when they came back after bank holiday she was dead in the walls uh so it's called mary that is the story that's going round. so it just kind of evolves from that it's really really good one of the t couple of the teachers get involved and i just really enjoyed it and i love the interaction between teachers and adults in middle grade books as well Sometimes you will get the, the you know, the odd adult that's been done in such a way that they don't believe anything a child says and makes them feel like they've got an over -imag overactive imagination and they're making things up. And then you will get the odd adult who will speak to this kid like they are an adult and exactly what they're saying is God's on his truth and, you know, nothing can dissuade, dissuade them and it is the truth. And I just, I kind of love that. I love the respect between um, adult and kid within a scenario like this i really enjoy it but i loved this i ended up giving it five stars this was fantastic phil hicks does it again because the alan jones series was quite high ratings from me as well i don't know if they all got five stars the first one definitely did um but they all got at least four stars so uh really really enjoyed this one very excited for the next one my next update for you is that i have been reading mina and the slayers by uh, amy mccaw this is the second one in the mina and the undead series and i made a bit of progress yesterday not too much but i got to page 160 yesterday so i do need to continue making progress on this today is sunday um it is east sunday happy easter and i do need to make more progress on this so i have about an hour before i need to go out maybe an hour and 20 minutes or so before i need to go out i'm going to my brother's this afternoon i'm going to go see the kids and my parents coming around as well we're going to go out for a drink at the cricket club and then we're going to go back to my brother's i think we might be getting some food as well chinese for tea or something uh so we'd like to make a little bit more progress on this i'm not quite halfway i'm about 40 percent but i'm still really enjoying this again very atmospheric 
very well done really enjoying myself with this one uh so yeah those are the updates uh that i've been needing to tell you about for the last couple of days having a very very good time this is a whole vibe and i have been absolutely living my best spooky life over easter weekend <laughs> i'm not gonna lie i've been having a fab time <laughs> I kind of want to carry this on <laughs> for the rest of the month I'm not gonna lie like into April uh so yeah this could bleed into tomorrow a little bit we're gonna see if I can if I get back and I can like focus and properly sort myself out and I get back at a reasonable time maybe I'll finish Mina and the Slayers but we'll see um so yeah I'm gonna read for about an hour or so now before I go out and then I'll read for a little bit when I get back later on you may get some b-roll of my Easter Sunday day we will see what happens. So yeah, I'll check back in with you and I've got another update for you. Hello. Come on. We play Okay, hello. It is quarter past seven on Monday evening. <laughs> and I'm here to wrap this vlog up, finally. Um, I ended up not being able to finish the book yesterday. I read a little bit in the morning before I went to my brother's and then I was at his for most of the day. I watched a little bit of TV when I got back and then went to bed and then promptly stared at the ceiling all night got up at half past seven this no half past yeah half past seven this morning and then i've been sprint on sprints all day with jade we've currently been live for nine hours and 46 minutes and we've got 18 minutes left and then we're out uh so i am here to wrap this vlog up so let's very quickly go through what I read and then I will give you my final thoughts on Mina and the Undead and the Slayers even. Mina and the Undead was the other week. So I did start off with Bride by Ali Hazelwood. I really enjoyed this one. I ended up giving it four stars. I thought it was really good. Really enjoyed the um, contemporary setting with the fantasy element of the wares and the vampires and if Ali was to revisit this world um, and give us another book from this world following maybe different characters I would be down for that I would 100% be down for that so really enjoyed that one then we we I DNF'd to Cage of God by Elizabeth May I just wasn't enjoying this one I only got like 50 odd pages in in fact my bookmark is still here 54 pages in 
but I wasn't enjoying it. I had no idea what was going on. I have since had a friend tell me that she got like 180 pages in and she said it got, it didn't get any better. If anything, it got worse. So I'm glad I made that decision so early on in the book. I really didn't want to waste too much time on this, especially with the vlog that I'm, I was making. At the time it was a soft DNF. This is probably going to be a hard DNF. I am gutted. The cover is beautiful, but it is what it is. There's not much I can do about it. Um, I then finished Shadow Hall Academy, The Whispering Walls by Phil Hicks, which I gave five stars. This was fantastic. Very atmospheric, very creepy, did everything I wanted it to do and more. Ticked all of the boxes. Um, really, really good. Would highly recommend if you're looking for creepy middle grade. And then finally today I have finished Mina and the Slayers by Amy McCourt, which is the second in the Mina and the Undead series. I freaking love this. This was so so good i've been chasing the vibes of clan in a cornfield since i read the first one which was last year or the year before i can't remember it's been a while now though and i'm really glad we're getting a third one in that series but i've been chasing the vibes of that ever since atmospheric creepy camp slasher you know scream halloween those types of movies in a book that's what i've been looking for and i've been struggling to get it um you're not supposed to die tonight by kaylin bayron kind of scratched the itch a little bit but not too much i wanted that book to be longer this series is scratching that itch so good um i am loving this series in this one we continue i've already told you what mina and the undead was about we continue to follow mina we're now in halloween in the first one we're in summer we're at the point of halloween one thing i did notice about this though is that some there's so much shit going on in mina's day that we would get to a point where she's like and i crash and then the following day and she'll be like oh, i can't believe how much happened yesterday and i was like Bitch, me either. I thought that was a few days. <laughs> um, this was just so good. The atmosphere continued. I love the vampire side of things. I love the characters. I'm so invested in these characters. Mina, Libby, Della, Jared. So invested in them. Even Detective Cafferty, like, super duper invested in these characters. There was a section, almost at the end, where... I Amy had me sweating. She had me sweating. I was worried. <laughs> worried. Let me tell you. Um, so, so good. Another five stars. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you again to Amy for sending me a copy of this. I truly appreciate it. I absolutely love this. If you're interested in the Mina and the Undead series, the fourth one is coming out on Thursday, so the day after this vlog goes up, it's coming out on Thursday. And you, I will leave a link to Amy's Etsy store in the description box down below. You can get all three of them. You can get them signed and personalized off of her Etsy store. And I believe if you're buying all three, like from the US, because of how much it's gonna cost, the shipping is free. Or so I've heard. So if you're interested in getting these, I 10 out of 10 would recommend. If you are looking for YA horror that's on the older side of YA, I would say that this is like the top end of YA, um, that gives slasher fat vibes, scream, Halloween, I know what you did last summer, Buffy, uh, those types of vibes set in New Orleans in 1995 with the pop culture references. Oh, this will give you all of that and more, let me tell you. With fantastic characters with loads of depth and there's lots of other stuff going on in the background as well as the plot that's going on in this. Cannot recommend it enough. I will leave a link to Amy's Etsy in the description box down below. Please go and check them out, I would recommend. So yeah, had a very good time with these books, minus to Cage of God, obviously, but it got another book off of my shelves. These were very much so anticipated releases for me. Mina and the Undead, oh, sorry, Mina and the Slayers, I keep doing that. Mina and the Slayers obviously bumped up after reading Mina and the Undead the other week. Um, so that did definitely bump that up my radar massively. And on that basis, now that I've finished this vlog, I am planning on starting Mina and the Cult. Whether or not I finish this before I go on holiday, I don't know. But if I don't, I will be taking it with me on holiday. Fully intend to read this um, this week slash while I'm away. Before, like Either before I go away or take it with me while I'm away if I'm partway through. 
So that is my plan for the next book and I'm going to start an audio book for something as well because these and the Mina books are not on audio. But yeah, had a really good time with this reading vlog. I hope you have enjoyed it. Chat to me in the comments down below. Have you read any of these? What are some of your anticipated reads? And shout out to my patrons. Thank you to them for putting newest on my reading vlog thingy-majig for this because my patrons i've already mentioned this at the beginning of the video but my patrons are getting an extended version of this vlog with an extra book in it um and newest was the prompt from stace so thank you to her for uh picking that i ended up picking some of my anticipated newest releases that have made it to my shelves recently and mina and the mina and the slayers is one of those mina and the undead i got a few years ago when i went to yalk uh, from Forbidden Planet but recently Amy did send me Mina and the Slayers and then she sent me Mina and the Cult so they did still count. Um, for me anything new was something that I've gotten this year at that point so yeah I had a really good time in this vlog I hope you did as well. Um, chat to me in the comments down below and I shall see you in whatever video comes next. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.